Both doors have been opened. The radiators can be deployed to begin dissipating the heat. The doors are all opened up and uh, hunky-dory. Glad to deploy it right on time. And the radiators look good. Okay, we, uh, we want to show you our own spot here. We do have a, uh, a few tile missing off of, uh, of both of them, uh, off of the uh, starboard pod, three uh, tile and some smaller pieces. And off the port pod, uh, looks like I see one full square and uh, looks like a few little triangular shapes that are missing. And uh, we're uh, trying to put that on TV right now. Roger, Crip, we can see that good. Uh, from what we can see of both wings, uh, tops and uh, leading edges, though, there's, uh, all those are fully intact. Within minutes, an assessment is completed on the impact these missing tiles could have on the remainder of the mission. At a news conference later in the day, Flight Director Neil Hutchison answers questions from reporters. Well, you asked me if I knew where there were any other tiles that might be loose. The answer is no. Uh, and quite frankly, we're not worried about any other tiles being loose. At this writing, is there anything anything at all that would lead you to say you might not go for a full duration mission? Nothing. Columbia, Houston, uh, you guys did so good, we're going to let you stay up there for a couple of days. You're for on orbit. Spacecraft must go for on orbit. This thing is just performing just outstanding. Roger, we agree with that. And Columbia, Houston, uh, just for your information, uh, you dropped those SRBs right on target, and uh, they were floating just the way they ought to be, and uh, the boats were getting ready to fish them and bring them back. Okay. The uh, ride that they gave us was uh, pretty neat. The solid rocket boosters, which separated from the Columbia as planned, two minutes, 11 seconds into the flight, landed on target in the Atlantic Ocean, 151 miles downrange from the launch site. After being towed back to Kennedy Space Center, both boosters will be refurbished and used again in a future shuttle flight. The third and fourth Ohms burns are also successful, raising Columbia's orbit to an altitude of approximately 172 miles. For the first television transmission from inside the spacecraft, the crew will give a status report on the mission. Just accident, says Robert Crippen. None of the other events of the day have been accidental. Every test, liftoff, SRB separation and recovery, ET separation and impact, four ohms burns, payload bay door latch opening and closing tests, radiator latch deploy and stowing tests have all been successful. I guess we owe you guys one super attaboy for today. I, this is fantastic. You worked through a pretty long, hard day, and you're essentially right on schedule, which I, is going to be close to being a first for the spaceflight biz, I think, for first day activities. 
it's sure been fun working with you today, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the morning. I hope you get a good night's rest. Okay, you guys did super work today. See you manana. Roger, thank you. See you tomorrow, guys. Well, many, many hours went into this thing. A job well done by the shuttle space team. We can't say she's sleek and lean, but I'll tell you right now, she's a mean machine. The Columbia. Not the kind you smoke. This here's a bird. Morning, Columbia. Welcome to day two. All right. Appreciate that super wake-up music this morning. Well, we sure enjoyed it. Missing a good breakfast. Today, the astronauts will test onboard systems and also review procedures for tomorrow's landing. A test of the flight control system is conducted by John Young. The flight control system operates Columbia's aero surfaces, the elevons, body flaps, rudder, and speed brake. These surfaces are useless in the vacuum of space, but will be essential tomorrow when the shuttle lands. This will require precision maneuverability, which the aero surfaces provide. Payload bay door cycling tests help ensure that latching and closing procedures can also be done before entry tomorrow. As with every mission, many pictures of the Earth are taken by the astronauts. Over 500 on this first shuttle flight. Active volcanoes, cloud formations, alluvial fans, giant whirlpools over 15 miles in diameter, sand dunes 1,500 feet high running unbroken for hundreds of miles. The high Himalayas, where mountain peaks reach 24,000 feet. And one of the most remarkable space photographs ever taken of the Earth, an area in Iran exposed to wind erosion, which has resulted in these breathtaking silt and sandstone formations that look more like a painting than a desert. After lunch on the second day, the astronauts receive a phone call from the Vice President of the United States, George Bush. How's it going up there? Everything rocking along all right? The ship is just performing beautifully. Well, it's great, and everybody views it, I'm sure, just as the forerunner of great things to come. I think your trip is just going to ignite the excitement and the forward thinking from this country, so I really just wanted to call up and wish you the very best. The crew also don and check out the ejection suits they will wear during entry. Young, Crippen, and Columbia pass every test. They are ready for the final phase of the mission, entry and landing. April 14, 1981, NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center on the edge of Rogers Dry Lake Bed in California. A recovery convoy of 24 vehicles and more than 100 personnel are assembling here to power down Columbia after landing. Enormous crowds are also beginning to arrive. A string of traffic six miles long waits to enter the base. Thousands more are already here. Close to one half million people will eventually be on hand to see the landing. 